Dave, before we get going and ask the really important questions, the really, really important question is, did you get some good grub this past weekend in New England? Shannon, I wasn't in New England. <gasps> oh, well, I brought you a cupcake. Is that good? That was way, that was way good. <laughs> yes, it was. Thank you very much. And, and, and I hear it's cucumber season around here, too, for that what it's worth. That is right. I oh, brought some boy. cucumbers from my husband's garden. Okay, let's talk about racing. Uh, when, you, when you look at this past weekend, everyone is talking about what we saw between Kyle and Kevin Harvey. And all of the fans have been weighing in. Yeah, Herbert's fast. There was nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with Kyle being upset. You know, he don't like the second place. I hope the big three continue to, to be strong, continue to bang bumpers, because having these three guys do what they did at New Hampshire over the weekend, it's just going to get better and better because I feel like they keep getting closer and closer in speed. We are at a point in the season now where I'm looking at the playoffs and I'm thinking, if one of these three doesn't get in, that's going to be huge. I wonder how much the stress level is going to begin to kick up in the playoffs be between those three. All right, see, I was going to ask you what people are saying about the bump and run, but, but we just heard it. So, that's I mean, it. has everyone just been on board with this? Well, yes, because I, I think that we've pretty much accepted all of us now that that's going to become a part of our game, that it is a part of our game. The bump and run, uh, differentiated from the dump and run, which is a whole lot less subtle, people seem to be okay with it, with the understanding, uh, and Kevin Harvick knows this as well as anybody, that if the roles are reversed any time in the near future, he's probably going to get what he gave. That's exactly what I was going to ask you about. When I think we can all agree that this is to be continued, particularly with way, the way that these guys are racing. When do you think we will see the sequel to this event? Well, you just don't know. It's all about circumstance. I don't think, you know, I don't think it's going to happen when they're racing for fifth with five laps to go. I don't think it's going to la uh, happen on lap 15 at Pocono. Uh, but, you know, we saw Jeremy Mayfield massage the late great Dale Earnhardt out of the lead in turn three of the final lap at Pocono a few years ago. It could happen again as soon as this weekend. I love it because the aggression is here. The fans are okay with it, but the drivers are okay with it as well, and it's still so early in the season. The playoffs are still six races away. You know, but it's getting later every minute, isn't it? And for teams that haven't got a win on the board, they're looking at six weeks to get the job done. And for the for the big three right now, they're looking at six more opportunities to pad the stats, six more opportunities to try and win that regular season title and lay in some playoff points for the second season. Okay, I know Martin Truex Jr. is part of this big three equation, but let's look at Kyle and Kevin. These are two elite drivers with huge personalities and a whole lot of talent. Is this the rivalry that NASCAR fans have been waiting for? Well, I think it has the potential to be, Shannon. There's no question about it. And I and I kind of been, I'm enjoying the fact that we're headed for Homestead right now with not one favorite, not two favorites, but actually three favorites that that are kind of doing battle with each other, trying to determine who's going to be the big dog of the kennel when it's all said and done. And, you know, unfortunately, most of the time this year, one of them has taken it to the other two, winning by five or six or eight seconds. What we saw last weekend, last laps head-to-head -head between at least two of them, if not three, I think we could really get used to that. So then what do you think Martin's approach is right now this week when we're, all we're talking about is Kyle and Kevin and we saw these two guys duking it out on the track? Well, Martin's approach is to do – it's the same approach that he's had every other week. He looks to go to Pocono, lead every single lap, win, win all three stages, and take home the maximum amount of points. What happened last week is over and done for Martin Truex and for everybody else. If, if, uh, if Harvick and Bush are up there knocking the fenders off each other with five to go. Martin will probably be happy to lay back for 10 or 12 car lengths and, and just let them wreck each other out and see what happens. But his number one plan right now, Cole Pern's number one plan, go to Pocono and dominate. You know, we talked earlier, Dave, uh, before the show, and you said that, that everyone's trying to find out who that fourth guy is. And we were, when we should really be focusing on just the top three, why, why not look towards that fourth guy? Well, I, I, I'm interested in all that into who the fourth guy in at Homestead is going to be. But if things continue the way they're going right now the fourth guy is almost an afterthought I mean you've got to go you got to go a long way down
down the speculative road to have that fourth guy end up as champion at Homestead. Right now, I'm less interested in talking about who's going to be number four and more interested in finding out who's going to be number one. <laughs> That's a very good point. Dave, thank you very much. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks for the cupcake.